Hey, what's up? Silas here. In this video, I'm going to be asking why people look at celebrities and athletes and just popular people and take the words they say in a different way than they would just any random stranger on the street. And a secondary point I would like to make is why I think it's actually very positive that you have people like LeBron James, the best, best basketball player in the world right now, talking about political issues. You have people like uh, Jennifer Lawrence, who's one of the best young actresses, deciding to take a year off from acting and actually go out and save the democracy, as she said. And with the Jennifer Lawrence thing, there's been previous situations where she's uttered things about politics. She's been very political, social political issues. And people say, what does this 24 year old know? She's 24 now and has done some amazing films already, as sky's the limit on her acting ability. I think she's one of the highest paid actresses, actually. At in her 20s already. So deciding to drop out of middle school, which I just found out about, was a good decision. <laughs> she ended up being very successful, found something that she wanted to do. So with Jennifer Lawrence, people say, why should she talk about these things? And I'll make a case that I think it's positive that she's talking about these things, but definitely one thing is positive and commendable, and I'll put on my proverbial hat and tip it to her, is the fact that a lot of people say, if you really care about something with all this money and and, uh, and abilities and things that you have and access to resources that you have, why don't you do something about it? Well, she's taking a year off to do something about what she thinks is an issue. And then some of those very same people are now like, ah, oh, what's she going to do? How's she going to help anything? If nothing at all, she's going to educate herself on these situations. And I have hope for her. There was this recent thing where she was wearing this Versace dress or something at the some kind of premiere or some kind of thing for her one of the recent movies she did and this was in london the males were it was 40 degrees or something out the males are wearing their jackets and things like that there's a photograph taken outside and she's wearing this um dress with like this rather high slit on the skirt on the on the dress i mean and then like a low slit on the front so her cleavage was exposed like part of her midriff was expo exposed and some feminist chimed in just some feminist online and writer or something she was like, oh, this is part of the patriarchy. She feels the need that she has to wear this outfit. And then she responded and was like, no, I just felt like I'm going to wear this. Like, it could, it could have been standing in snow for that outfit. That outfit has to be seen. It's not like she was out the entire time with it. She decided to wear that for the photo op. So for all we know, it could have just been like 30 seconds. Take a couple of photographs. She puts it back on. The person's like, oh, somebody should have given her a jacket. No, no, no. It's not really that serious. So she could just be a situation where she's this young. She's trying to learn these things. And that is part of what I'm saying. Some of these celebrities, part of the reason we know them so much is because they know a whole lot of other things so much that puts them in a point where their lives are as alien to any other person's, to our life, as a homeless person's life would be. So why are we putting more salience in some of the things that they discuss, more importance in some of the things that they say than we would a homeless person or just a cashier? or just a plumber, or just any other random person off the street. So before you take general advice about anything, if you have the chance, you normally go to places where you expect to find good advice from that thing. You know, if you want to know what happened with a recent basketball game, you turn on a sports network, you go to a sports website, you don't go to like a um, fashion website expecting to get information and in the Super Bowl or something like that. Although I guess it might be some kind of related things like, oh, this is what the Super Bowl athletes wore to the actual game, what they wore after the game. This is what they wore at the post-Super Bowl party, or this is what the celebrities were wearing. You'd expect to find that kind of stuff, but you wouldn't expect to find an analysis of the analytics of what team is better because they have X number of people that catch this many balls and drop this many balls, and this defensive person has defended this many balls and swatted this many balls down, or has X number of actual completions against him per target, that just means like the amount of people, times that the ball is thrown towards the receiver they're marking, how many times does that person actually end up catching the ball? Now, these are kind of things where even just from that, I know this information. Why? Because I played sports, I follow sports, not just that, but I've actually had the extra time to actually go online and read this in certain websites that specialize on this. So why don't we do this more in our general life when we're taking in things that are said by people who may not really know what they're talking about? And later on, I'll definitely get into how some of these people, how it's very good to see that these people who are undoubtedly very amazing, very good at certain things, 
may not be as good at other things as we are. We may be LeBron James at what we're good at compared to, and LeBron James may be the us <laughs> as compared to we are, let's say, our basketball ability compared to what LeBron James is at basketball. So here we go. So I'll tell you this story to kind of better understand uh, what I'm trying to get at. And I think this is one of the points that really crystallized it to me. I've kind of thought of this before, but I think I this is a good way to kind of put it out. There was this time, it was about two years ago, I was in New York City. We had just been in um, Lower Manhattan, I think it was around Bleecker Street. We were at an Italian restaurant with some friends, and we were heading out. It's a little chilly, I think it was somewhere around uh, November or something. But get out and we're just in our talk, you know, just talking about certain things, continuing the conversation we had inside. And I get out on the street and we're walking towards the subway and I see this disheveled person kind of shambling over to me. They're kind of huddled up in these coats, multiple coats, um, but they clearly looked homeless. They looked like they were out of sorts. And they look to me and then they say, um, I think they even had a blanket wrapped around them, if I remember correctly. So they looked at me and they said, hey, can you help me get something to eat? And then I kind of responded that I had no cash because I often use my card or if here in Kenya, there's this impressive thing where you pay with your phone. You don't, I don't know, I don't often carry on cash. So you get in this situation where um, she says that or she or he, I don't know if it was a she or he, I couldn't necessarily tell. And this is not just like the people, so this, not a homeless person. Yeah, homeless person, homeless people. Um, so you have this situation where they're kind of sh shambling that way and then I kind of just say, no, I don't have anything. And then keep walking and then I hear them yell. They just yell louder. They say, why are you walking away from me? Why won't you help me? And then I repeat it again. I said, I don't have any cash. I'm sorry. And I really didn't have any cash. But thinking about it, I don't like saying sorry unless it's something that's my fault. And as I said, I just don't normally carry cash. So... I don't think it was appropriate to say sorry there, but I said it anyway, and it was more as like an avoidance thing, because I think that's why people normally say sorry, is just avoid actually engaging. So I kind of felt guilty about doing that, but it was also just a homeless person. It was a homeless person I didn't know. But in personal relationships, I don't normally say sorry, unless it's something that I did, because I prefer actually engaging with the person. But that's a bit of a tangent. So anyway, they continued to louder and louder say, like as I was walking away, yell at me and say different things to me. And then they all of a sudden yell, you look like the devil. And so <laughs> that's, a, that's a bit of a thing for somebody to say that, you know, like even more so than your average homeless person. They don't normally do this, but hey, maybe this is more average for New York City homeless people. But my experience here in Nairobi, they really don't engage you that much. They may pester you a lot or may follow you and keep saying, if you say no, 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 they'll keep following you. But this outside, outright yelling, that goes into a situation where this person may have had more mental issues, maybe a bit crazy. But um, yeah, so I looked to one of my friends and just kind of gave a passway comment like, hey, calling someone the devil is probably not the best way for them to like help you. Right? If you actually want someone to help you, calling them, saying they look like the devil, it's not like, oh, you said that? Oh, finally, damn, I'm glad somebody finally said I look like the devil. I'm going for that look. You're like the first person that has ever actually got that in and know it so like now let me go take out money at the atm and actually give you some of the money that's chances of that happening you're slim to none unless it's like halloween and you actually are dressed up like that as that and somebody actually picks up what you're dressed at but yeah <laughs> so tangents so it's thinking about that is probably too high a level of reasoning for somebody who's homeless and likely crazy thinking like hey don't kill someone the devil at least maybe like you know Maybe if you say someone is looks like an angel, like, you look like an angel, how come you're not helping me? Then somebody might consider that. But at the same point, I think for somebody who is homeless in that sense, in that disheveled sense, who doesn't really know anything about me, then I should be able to disqualify any positive or negative things they say. If they say I look like the devil, I can just shrug that off like okay I, I don't think i do i don't think i'm devil like so okay you have that opinion you're allowed to say that if they say something positive about me i can just say yeah okay that's the same thing i'm yeah you have that opinion that you don't really know me but yeah okay thanks and then you keep walking i mean one thing i will admit there probably was some intention in using the term devil to kind of harm me or to kind of insult the person because i wasn't giving them something that they thought they wanted or they thought like I had for them that I was just denying them for whatever reason 
But let's say you're just yelling random things. You look like a pickle. You look like a ninja turtle. You look like this person I used to know. That is as equally as disqualified in a situation or as it's as equally empty to my actual day-to-day -day life, to my reality tunnel, as anything else. As them yelling it to completely somebody else. I just happen to be hearing it and just happen to be targeted towards me. But if they were just yelling that to themselves, it would have as much interest to my life, as much effect to my life as it would if they were yelling it at me. Despite the fact that I'm making this video. So I guess it has had some kind of effect like that. But I need to stop these little small little tangents. <laughs> or, or do I? Let me know if those really bother you. If those really bother you when I kind of just break off in thoughts and go off. When I was actually writing in the blog, I used to have these things in cursive in a different color to kind of signify that you don't really have to read this because it's just like random thought stream kind of going off. It's a small little tangent. And that's what's happening right now. But yeah, let me get, let you, sorry, let me know if you guys want me to reduce on that or just keep going with the general flow of stuff because sometimes I'm going in a free flow video and then I have to like, I feel like okay, I should pause because if I continue, I'm just going to go into a different thing or are you guys okay with it? But anyway, so back into this. So I think this homeless person had a little, as little to do with my life as someone like LeBron James does in just like the random comments thing. So LeBron James is an elite superstar with an amazing career. He has hundreds of millions of fans all over the world as dollars from hundreds of thousands of hours perfecting and studying his craft, studying his ability to play basketball. Has, at least for people who I consider have put in the time to understand what the hell they're talking about, he has one of the highest basketball IQs that anyone has ever. So I, even if he was speaking about my basketball ability and I was walking down the street and LeBron James came even understanding he is an expert at basketball and just looks at me and says, you're an amazing basketball player, but I completely understand that he's never seen me play basketball. That should have as little effect in my life as this homeless person has in calling me the devil. Now that's in some field that LeBron James knows about. Now if LeBron James has actually seen me play and then he's saying that, then I can be like, okay, yeah, maybe, he is, he's, maybe I have some potential that I, I don't know about because it's LeBron James. But if he's just talking about something random, if he's just like, yeah, heard your really good singing voice. Like, you've never heard me sing, LeBron. Like, I'm, I'm not going to put any actual salience in that. Even if LeBron was the one calling me the devil, I'd be like, okay, LeBron, call me the devil. Yeah, you don't know me. <laughs> so why should I really listen to what LeBron says about politics and be like, yeah, okay, that guy's actually on point. What he said there, I'm going to follow that. Oh, this LeBron James said something was racist. He must know exactly what he's talking about. Yeah, I'm Maybe he doesn't know what he's talking about in the situation. Maybe some of these celebrities don't know what they're talking about. Maybe you actually know more about your life. Maybe you actually know more about regular society because you spend, not regular society, but just general society, average society, because you spend most of your life in what people consider average society. But this is not necessarily how our minds work. Clearly it isn't. It's not necessarily how it works for me, not necessarily how it works for most of you listening to this, but we can attempt to kind of get over these things. I mean, we find ourselves listening to celebrities and famous people about things they have little actual knowledge of. You know, like one thing I remember um, the was this playoffs, the last playoffs with Golden State it was 2016. The playoffs, Golden State had been sweeping people four games out, four games out, out of all the seven game series, just looking unstoppable. But it was Golden State versus the Cleveland Cavaliers in the NBA Finals, and I was thinking like, okay, yeah, I'm expecting a sweep. I'm expecting Golden State to just continue doing this and knock them out. The sports pundits were talking about the effect that LeBron James has on the league, you know, has on the league, has on the team, how he's just, I think somebody says this, uh, somebody else said this about quarterbacks, a force multiplier, where if you put them on the team, they automatically make everybody else, all the other aspects of whatever's going on in that situation better. And LeBron James is definitely that kind of player where you just plug him in and everybody else seems to play better. Um, so people were talking about this. They were talking about the positives, but one negative they were saying that happens with a team like Golden State Warriors or even something like LeBron James is reducing the competitiveness of the league. You know, they were saying that if the Golden State Warriors actually swept the Cleveland Cavaliers in four games, then it would end up being the worst finals ever. It would be the most 
boring finals. It will be the same matchup because it's been Cleveland Cavaliers versus the Golden State Warriors for three years in a row, or two of the last three years. It was, yeah. So now counting to 2016, yeah, two of the last three years, they the, they're the ones who were in the finals. So they claim that if they swept the series, Golden State went four and zero again, went sixteen and zero total in the NBA Finals. It would have been the most boring Finals in, in history of the NBA. But it turns out, if you guys have watched it, they did not sweep. Like it was an amazing series. LeBron and the Cavaliers. It was in Game Four. Yeah, this was the, actually the Game Four of the series where I was watching this. Where I was like, is this going to be it? How are they going to be done? LeBron and the Cavaliers with Kyrie Irving. They put in a clinic. It was like Ben Carson brain surgery of being the first American brain surgeon to separate a twin's brains, like conjoined twin's brains, level of expertise in surgery when it comes to basketball. These people were, like that game they put on was amazing. After that performance, just watching that performance and just being enthralled and just gripped by it, just the dominance that I saw them put on in that game four of the series, of that NBA play- playoff series, the final series. and. One thing that even superseded that was knowing that as good as the Cavaliers were playing, like you still just knew, like they had no chance. I still just felt like still no chance. There's no possible way they could play this well. They had to have the best game. It's kind of similar to what Tom Brady did against the Eagles. In, he had like the best outing of a quarterback ever in the last Super Bowl, the Super Bowl of uh, that just passed a, f- a month ago now in uh, 2018 when they got beaten by the Philadelphia Eagles. He had 500 and something yards, I think. One of the best QB ratings in the Super Bowl ever. Scored the most points of any losing team, but still lost. So this thing, watching LeBron James, watching Kyrie Irving, watching put together this team performance, this record-breaking team performance in the playoffs, and still knowing that Golden State is on the other side, still that much better. They still probably just a done deal next game. Was this something quite quite um i'm glad i saw it it was something quite uh, memorable so with that they said that um lebron james decided to leave the cavaliers the first time he left to go to miami to build a super team there was what led other players in the league to do the same it's what led the situation where the golden state warriors could go to the playoffs or could win 69 69 games out of 72 games and then still take on Kevin Durant the second best player of the league because LeBron James had set that president you know they say that someone like Michael Jeffrey Jordan as who says that uh skip Bayless this is Michael Jeffrey Jordan I like how he says all the names but uh Michael Jeffrey Jordan they like the fact that Michael Jeffrey Jordan played every single game when he was playing in the league you know he played tough and then now you have people players who kind of rest a team like the San Antonio Spurs, a coach actually just comes out and says, yes, I'm resting my players for the playoffs. So they're saying, oh, it's different. People don't do that now. I don't think it matters. I don't think you have to play every single game. Like, why Why shouldn't they just like, reduce the games of the season? Because it's too many games, in my opinion. But anyway, um, so when did you reduce the games? But because they don't want to reduce the games because they understand more games, more revenue, and it's not for the benefit of the players. So when people say that, at least the league itself, if anybody complains... But do people in the league complain? Uh, I don't know. So we can admit that LeBron James is one of the best players to have ever played basketball. And even lying for that, I would not suggest that every single person that plays basketball looks at every single thing that LeBron James does basketball-wise and then says, I have to follow everything that I'm doing. Every kid who comes out of high school or comes out, starts bouncing in basketball when they're five years old should not look at LeBron and say, I have to copy everything LeBron James does. Because some kids are going to be like Anthony Davis size. Some people are going to be a lot bigger. Some people might shoot better. Some people might be better at dribbling. Some people may look at Kyrie Irving and say, I need to be more like Kyrie Irving. Some people may even look at Isaiah Thomas and say they want to be more like Isaiah Thomas because that fits more what they're good at. Okay, maybe not Isaiah Thomas. (laughs) But anyway, at least when it comes to basketball, there's other people who in that field, even if LeBron James is the best, at basketball and you want to enter that field doesn't mean everything LeBron James did is something that you can do even if you want to be successful at that field so that's even specifically in that field so remember that somebody the best at what they do even if you want to do the similar thing that they want to do doesn't mean everything they say about that thing is something that you should want to do so with that being said LeBron James is still one of a kind and the rest of the league could have easily decided to do whatever they want to do. You know, they could have decided, we want to stay in our teams. We want people to build around us. 
I want to stick with this one team all the way through. I'm not too worried about winning rings. I just enjoy playing the game. But hey, this is what happens. People change. People don't always follow what is done beforehand. And you see that. Some people have tried to make these super teams, move around, join other teams with varying success. And some people like Kyrie Irving, as I, as I mentioned before, has actually decided to leave LeBron. And it's his first year away from him, and we'll see what happens with that. But just a reminder, understand that these people are good at one thing, but not good at everything. Another good thing to remember when it comes to athletes is you have to understand there's a genetic quotient to this. They are physically gifted. Even if I found some way to put in the same amount of hours and dedication that LeBron has in the gym and studying film and getting to understand the game of basketball, I cannot make myself six foot eight. There's probably something about his metabolism, the way his muscles work, that he can train them in a certain way and then add his mental aspect, mental acuity, his basketball IQ to that to create the best basketball player currently playing right now. So that goes towards basketball. But that does that necessarily apply to other fields? Does that apply to what he's talking about politically? Does that apply to his um, awareness of what, what racism is? Does that apply to his awareness of what the general plight of the United States of America or the world is? I don't necessarily think it does. And these are some certain physical and genetic gifts that these people have. Have, sorry. <clears throat> For example, if you take like a supermodel, they are also physically gifted. Are they just physically gifted? No. Are they more than a model? Yes. But at the same point, if you have a female who's maybe five foot one, has some thyroid issue and puts on weight, they can practice as much as any supermodel, understand how to walk on the runway, practice the walk, understand how to pick certain fashion designs, understand how to present themselves in public, understand how to go and sit there. I think there's other challenges towards it, just the travel, the dieting, the um, awareness of hmm, styles and what fits best with you, how to purport yourself, how to carry yourself in public. Somebody can study that, but if they're lacking that physical aspect, that genetic aspect, they're not going to get there. Yet you don't really hear people holding what models say at the same level as what you will with someone like LeBron James, even though I argue that they are as many genetic and physical gifts that these people have that lead them to be the top, and lead them to be very successful at the certain fields that they have. So coming back to this whole situation where they are more than their job, everyone is more than their job. That homeless person is more than a homeless person, is more than a job, jobless person. He may have certain things to say. The cashier is more than a cashier. They have things to say about other things. But when you have this situation where I've mentioned in previous videos, Laura Ingram says to LeBron James, shut up and dribble. And then people say, oh, that's racist. He's more than an athlete. LeBron James comes up and says, I'm more than an athlete. LeBron James wears the shoes that say equality on it. What does that mean? What, what do you mean equality? Equality in basketball? Should the basketball courts be like, no, we, we're going to have everybody win. You can't be better than everybody else. You have to score as much as everybody else. Everybody should score equally as you do. Everybody should be equally as tall as you are. No, you're not saying that, LeBron. What does that equality mean? <sighs> anyway, that equality term. So you have a situation where um, I'm listening to some more sportscasters, and they're talking about how, yes, they poo-poo what Laura Ingram said. That's racist. You don't understand LeBron. Then they go in and just talk about LeBron. They say he's more than an athlete, but... Our entire business, our entire job is to focus on how much of an athlete he is. Not all the other things, those other things are some bonus on there, but 95% or more of our coverage is going to be how good he is as a basketball player. And that 5% more is he's done this through basketball and now he's doing this. Almost nothing they, they talk about with LeBron James is just purely him not being an athlete. Even the political stuff, they're like, as an athlete, he's one of the first ones to have done this, and then they might talk about that. So when you have this kind of situation where um, he's talking, this one particular guy, Nick Wright, on this show, it was uh, this show, first take, with, uh, first take with Chris and Nick, or Chris Carter and Nick Wright. Anyway, so he comes on and he's talking about how he's a fan of Kansas City, Kansas City Chiefs bas a football team. He was talking about how there was an athlete on the team who was uh, removed, a cornerback, who was traded away. And he was supposedly one of the best cornerbacks athletes on that team. And Nick Wright to say, look, I'm only concerned with him playing. If he's playing well, I don't care if he's 
taking a knee. He said part of the reason he was removed is because he took a knee. I don't think people actually believe that. He was saying that, oh, there's always been a problem with Kansas City fans. They don't, they can't really stand, they can't really handle a strong black athlete. Uh, he didn't actually back it up with any facts, although it's a sports analyst show. I'm not really expecting him to list out a bunch of sources or examples, maybe one example. But anyway, so he says that and he says, I don't care about all that stuff. I don't care if he's not personable. I don't care if he's clashing with people. I'm not care if he's not part of the community, not interacting with people. I only care that he helps the team win. He was saying that. So he's like, I don't care about anything about him that makes him more than an athlete. I only care about the athletic parts about him. Yet the same person will go out and say, oh, anybody talking about LeBron, LeBron's more than an athlete, so he should be talking about these things. And at the same point, he didn't say that LeBron James should be hired because of his non-athletic uh, abilities. But at the same point, when somebody says, shut up and dribble, focus on the sports, he says that's racist. When he's talking about this athlete and saying, hey, I'm only focused on the sports, that's not racist. Now, taking this on to someone like Donald J. Trump, who just, I think today or yesterday, declared that he's going to run for 2020. So Trump 2020, <laughs> like, that's definitely guaranteed. But so with Trump, most of the times people complain about Trump is they say the way he carries himself. They say, oh, he's brash. Oh, he's this way. He should speak a different way. But now carrying the same reasoning that he was giving about, Nick Wright was giving about this um, cornerback from Kansas City Chiefs, you're saying, I don't care about his off the field stuff. I care that he's an amazing athlete. I care that he's getting the job done. He's been hired to win games, so he's winning games. So why is it with Donald J. Trump, so many people are like, I don't care about him actually getting things done as a president. I don't care that he made these promises. You shouldn't speak this way. You shouldn't tweet about that. You shouldn't speak about this. How many people have told Donald J. Trump, shut up and preside, shut up and preside, 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 shut up and preside. How many people have told him that? Shut up and be the president. While you're supposed to be doing some presidential things, you're here tweeting, even though he could be tweeting in between going to things, and why not both? Anyway, so people say that. People critique the Golden State Warriors for being angry or complaining about things that they've been lucky and successful about. You know, they should, should they just shut up and dribble? Is that what you're saying about the Golden State Warriors? They shouldn't have nine technicals. They shouldn't be complaining about the refs not giving them calls. Is that what you're saying? No. People wouldn't say that was racist. People would just say, yes, we're saying they have all these achievements, they have all this level. So how come when someone like LeBron James has achieved all these things, then you can go in and say, eh, maybe this country isn't as racist as you think it is. Maybe it's not that hard for a black person in this country because look, you're a black person, right? You've become the best at what you do, best at what anyone, arguably the best at what anyone has ever done. And if there's other people competing with you for being the best at that, they're also black. They also were in the United States of America. And that was even in the past when I think anybody can argue that it was more racist in the past. I mean, that was closer to, hmm. Okay, somebody can make arguments to say that the racial tensions have grown, even though the actual racism itself hasn't, has decreased, which is what I think is a state. That awareness of it has grown, but the actual racial nature of it is lower. Now, um, okay, so I do understand people are treated differently depending on who they are. You are not going to expect the same out of LeBron James, who is, um, I think, I don't think it's even arguably, he's understood to be the face of the National Basketball Association. As the best player, people expect a lot more out of him than they would from somebody on the worst team in the league who plays maybe, who comes off the bench, who probably hasn't even played in the game. You wouldn't expect him to talk about, to hold himself publicly and give press conferences, give interviews in the same manner that he would LeBron James. Even though personally, I think they could be on the same level of knowledge on anything, even on basketball itself, even if they don't have the achievement levels. So I do understand you saying, as a president, he should be held, Donald J. Trump should be held to a different standard politically and socially because that's kind of his venue, that's kind of his field. Even though, again, I don't think there's any actual requirements of being presidential besides being president. Even <laughs> Prime Minister Justin Trudeau with his... Indian dancing and whatnot in the Indian outfits. As cringeworthy as it is, and as surprising as it may be for some people in the West, 
I'm used to that because here in Kenya, you see politicians doing this little kind of hop dancing where they kind of have their shoulders in. And this is why I think there's a difference between like black and Negro because these people are just Negroes because like not all Negroes can dance, but there's something about black culture that seems to get people to be able to dance and be able to have some rhythm and things like that. That seems to be very lacking in a lot of the politicians, at least I see here in Kenya, trying to dance out in public. But anyway, um, so it comes back to this thing where you don't understand people have different expectations, different abilities. You may say President Donald J. Trump is a public figure, so he's out there in public, so he should be judged and people should be asked, shut up and preside. That's what I expect from you. That's what we voted you in for. But even basketball players, they have some kind of public support. They are public figures, especially someone like LeBron James, who does put in a lot of work to be more than an athlete. He's building his brand. He's doing these other things, getting out in public and saying, look, I'm more than a basketball player. Listen to me. He's offering his thoughts into the public sphere. So once you put that out there, yes, people can say, shut up and dribble. The only reason I really follow you is for your basketball. With this entire field of athletics, people like Tiger Woods, who, as amazing of an athlete that he is, we can all admit that he has some very many shortcomings in his personal life, in his dealings with women, in his marital fidelity and things like that. Or marital? No, he has, he's actually very good at marital infidelity, apparently but he's very bad at keeping together a monogamous relationship. But you have a situation where we know they're more than athletes. We know they have personal lives, but we're also more surprised about hearing this from Tiger Woods about him doing this thing than we would if your cashier was like, yes, you overheard your cashier talking about, yeah, I actually cheated on my wife, I did this, and then she attacked me. And you sit back and like, ah, can't believe this. But when it comes from Tiger Woods, it's like, ah, can't believe this. Why, why not? What about Tiger Woods' life makes you think that he should all of a sudden have that same level of capability in golf transferred over to his marital relationships? There's nothing that he's shown to us that would make us think that, yeah, he should be a Tiger Woods at marriage. We don't know that. And the people, the analysts know this. We know this in somehow. That's why the analysts go on and they keep covering these athletes because they understand that, oh, Tiger is making a comeback. Tiger's making a comeback. Has he made a comeback in his wife? Has he found a wife? Has he now settled down? They don't really care about his more than the athlete parts. They care about his athletic parts because they realize if he's good at sports, the better he is at sports, the more people are watching him play sports, the more our pay is. The better his play, the better their pay. They get that. We get that. So this whole idea of shut up and dribble, shut up and hit the golf ball, shut up and sing, shut up and dance, shut up and entertain us, we understand why we're going there. If you went to the, the grocery store and you were going through, I know sometimes people have some banter with their cashier, but their cashier all of a sudden just starts like going off on like President Barack Obama and stuff, and you're a supporter of Obama or just talking about how crap Hillary is, you'd be like, shut up and scan. You'd think that in many cases because you're like, what do you know about this? Why should I hear this from you? I'm not here for that. We're not in this situation for that. If you talk to me about how, oh, this is actually on sale. You'd be like, oh yeah, thanks. That's actually something I'd want to know. That's something I expect you to know. That's some kind of information I'm expecting from this relationship. That's something that happens. I think that's understood. And for many of us, even these athletes that we look at, that we say, oh, they're more than the game. They're more than this. We understand we only support them. In many cases, people only support them when they're on their team. People only talk about them when they're playing basketball. These casters, once these people retire, they will stop talking about them. A few like LeBron James, the greats, like Michael Jeffrey Jordan, they'll still be referred to back, but they're probably not going to be referred to about anything. But hey, this current current player is really good like that other guy was when he was playing. There'll be very few times, and I'll be very happy to be proved wrong if they're saying, hey, this current player may not be good at basketball, but he's as good as this other player was at his non-basketball things. Oh, this player actually happened to have his... 30th and anniversary with his wife, which is really good, unlike Tiger Woods who had these issues. You're not going to hear that kind of commentary on a sports thing because people will be like, hey, shut up and stick to sports. So that's actually what's been happening with like some network like ESPN. People are like, why are you talking about all this social commentary? Shut up and talk about sports. Shut up and talk about what we're here for. And let me kind of get to the point where I'm saying it's kind of good to see that these people are out there. Celebrities and people like this are talking about this. Athletes and people like this are talking about this because these are people who are actually very good examples of analyzing why can they be very good? How can this person be as amazing as they are 
at what they're doing. How can somebody be LeBron James at LeBron James? How can somebody be LeBron James at basketball and still be so wrong about everything else? You know, that gets to the point where we start questioning what is people's competence? Where you realize that, yes, somebody can be that amazing at something. And then now you can have a conversation like this entire video where I'm pointing out that, look, these people are very high achievers, but they chose to study certain fields. They chose to become... They chose to exp to get their expertise and specialize at certain things. And that's how they've achieved that level of ability. So yes, they have some genetic aspects. Yes, there's some luck aspect to that. But they still had to go that extra mile and say, I'm going to put myself to do this more than these other things. So it kind of gets to the point where you can also think that, hey, maybe if I actually do like they did at these other certain aspects of their life, they got better at that thing. And these other things that they didn't put energy into they weren't as good at that, then you can think, hey, maybe if I can actually go out and maybe I've put in 100 hours studying what politics is, studying what capitalism is, studying the history of racism in the country, studying these certain social topics, that may be 100 times more than what Jennifer Lawrence has done. That may be 100 times more than what LeBron James has done. You might be 100 times better at political anal and analysis than LeBron James. And I think that's a good thing. That's a positive thing where you're finally seeing people get the example to say, hey, look, we can actually get better at these things, just like they got better at these other things, just because somebody is good at something, just because somebody was voted in as a politician in this other place, doesn't mean they know what they're talking about across the board. Some guy may have come, somebody like Donald J. Trump may have had no actual political experience before this, but somehow what he's doing there could translate into something else because maybe he's actually surrounded himself with people who have studied these things. So that's kind of what I'm trying to think. I haven't really put that together as well as I think it is in my head. And I might try to put it better in a later video in a more concise way. But this is more just kind of putting together these kind of things where I think it's positive for public figures to talk about things, especially things that involve and affect the world this way, because that gets more people into into the pool, into the pool of politics, into the pool of social issues. And then you also get to understand that, yes, I shouldn't be cowed. I shouldn't be awed away from actually talking about these things just because somebody else seems like they're better than me at this. I can actually be as good as them at certain things or better at certain things by actually putting in some effort to myself. So um, that's it for the video. Let me know. What do you guys think about that? Apologies for the disjointed nature about this. I was trying to tie in some more recent thoughts and uh, something that I had thought of or written, scripted somewhat some months back. But yeah, so that's it for this video. And um, hmm, I feel like I'm forgetting something. But uh, like, share, and subscribe. Links below to the merchandise store. Goodbye. Okay, some of these shut up and balance people are the people who are pushing back against that. They understand that as sports analysts, some of them have never played the game that they're talking about. So if they admit that having some kind of experience in that thing is a prerequisite to speak about it, they'll have to kind of start saying like, oh yeah, maybe I shouldn't be speaking about what I'm talking about. Or they'll have to admit that people watching them will be like, hey, we just want basketball players to be covering basketball. We just want football players to be covering football. We just want males to be covering male sports. We just want females to be covering female sports. And you go even further, people talking about the whole my lived experience. A lot of these people will actually go out and say, look, you don't know what it's like to be a black person. So LeBron James knows about that. So you as white people, you need to be quiet. But then if a white person says, hey, you're not involved in politics. So you as a non-politician, non-political analyst, you need to be quiet. Oh, that's racist. Anyway, double standards need to stop. Hope we can improve with that. That's it.